this is Emmy from the Startup Blog, and today is Friday. Yay! Friday, April something. <laughs> oh, once again, I have a Friday evening free, and for me, this is like unbelievable that I have two Friday evenings free, which means that I don't have to look wait or wonder or think about what my daughter is going to do or get a babysitter for my daughter so that I can do something, because usually I just don't plan things in the evenings. So I have another Friday free, and I'm quite quite sure what I'm going to do. It has to be something artsy, because I need to put it on the website. <laughs> Not quite sure where it would be, though. So I have to look. I know the museum, open museums, I think, but I think that's tomorrow. I don't think it's tonight, but I'll have to look. Because if that's happening, then I'll just go to all the museums, take some photos. I've had some nice news this week. Um, we have about 1,300 people on our Facebook page. And this is just with like doing a tiny bit of promotion. I don't spend a lot of money on that. Um, but through word of mouth from other people, and it's what's really nice on Facebook is it tells you exactly where everybody's coming from. Like if they're coming from their mobile phone or if they're coming from a search, it tells you exactly where how they found you, which I really like. So <clears throat> now that that has about, has more than 1,300 people now, I am going to, um, the, the I'm working on the web page. So... <laughs> We're starting off on the web page with, uh, I'm using a WordPress web page to start with. And then I've added, I just today started researching the calendars because I told the members of the Facebook page that I would start keeping track of a calendar for them of things, exhibitions, um, art openings, a little bit different than the exhibition, rooms, op open studios, whatever, of submission calls, all those things that artists are interested in or people who are interested in art are interested in keep it in calendar for that. And I found a really cool calendar. Um, it's not going to be on my database. It'll, not, it'll be my database, but it will not be on my computer. It'll be um, an interactive calendar someplace else, so I have to pay a monthly fee. But it's absolutely, the fee is not that bad, and it's used by a lot of oh. universities. So it'll be something that can handle what I want to use it for. So I'm happy about that. And now I just have to figure out, um, it's an added expense to this you know, the Munich artist is not a is not my mon monetary source. It's not where I'm I'm looking to make any kind of income from. This is just to build the community. So um, I have to add that into my expenses, and then I'm going to have to figure out how to recoup those expenses later. <laughs> so I have to factor that in because that's a it's more. It's actually quite a bit for technology. It's quite a bit expensive monthly amount. <laughs> But I think it's going to be worth it. So we'll see. We'll see. And I've contact, I'm going to be contacting um, next week once the website is... Well, I'm going to work on the website this weekend some more. I'm working on it now. And once I've got that done, then I'll, I'll contact a couple of people that I'm interested in getting some content from them and do some kind of partnership collaboration with them. And I need to find out if they would be willing. They don't have an Internet presence, so I don't think that this is going to be a huge issue for them. And I have no interest in, in, in stepping on their toes, at least not in the, in the concrete sense, you know, which is physical books. <laughs> My, I did meet with one guy who makes art catalogs and um, gallery books and that kind of stuff this week, and he's going to give Munich artists, artists a discount if they use his services. He was... He has some nice, nice ideas, but the problem is that some of his ideas require a database. Like, they require a database of people to contact. And I know artists, and they're not going to have this database. <laughs> so, you can make them make all kinds of physical things, but the artists have to distribute it some way, and if they don't have that database, then it's just going to sit in their rooms, which isn't, like, a very good thing. So, we'll see how that works. Really nice guy. He's also an artist. So, I highlighted him on the, on the website today, and he's making a landing page specifically for a Munich artist, and so then um, I can put that link on my um, on my website. So that's what I've been working on. It's a good thing. I put up the second gallery on the Facebook, so artists have been submitting artwork this week of current artwork of theirs, and then I put that on the on Facebook gallery, and I've embedded that onto the website so people can look at the Facebook galleries on the website. Oh. The, another thing that I have to do is take all the information from the artists that have, they've been sending me and put that on the website also, so that there's an index of artists. So like the glossary index of Munich artists <laughs> who've, who've bothered to contact me. 
and I will put others, but I would rather that I actually, you know, there's not like a, it's not like an infinite number. It, there's a defined number of artists, so I can go ahead and meet these. That's not a problem. So I would rather meet the artists and then put that information on once I meet them or through contact through email. So I'm working on that also. The question that Chris posted this week was for digital, like in technology, what do we think? And of course, since I work with technology, I absolutely love it. And I just want to give you an example of the story of my past, which <laughs> when I was at, in um, university in grad school, we had internet, so I had, was able to talk with people on the internet, and this was a long time. And it really bothered me that all we could do was talk. Like, all we could do was send messages to each other and, like, chat forums and stuff. It just bothered me there was nothing visual, because I'm such a visual person. It really, really bothered me. This was 93, 1993. And I, I really, it really pissed me off that I, I could send texts. We could, and, you know, as a female, we share out ten times more than men, which has been proven. <laughs> I just, it bothered me that everything was just text. It was not visual. So in the... Um, advancement of technology and the internet. I've been so happy that things have become visual and more interrelated and for me that's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I think for me the downside with technology is that people are trying to use it as a replacement for actual relationships. You know, so they're like, oh I have lots of friends and like they really don't have any. And I think that this is like a problem. It's causing a problem in society. It's like you should actually go out and enjoy yourself and not just be connected to a computer. Because that's not real, it's not giving you the same satisfaction as having real relationships. So I think that's a major downside with technology. I think another major downside of technology is that it's so dependent on battery life and on um, energy, on specific energy resources. And that's fragile. That makes it really fragile. And our whole infrastructure is based on this. And we can <laughs> go into great detail about that. But for me, that is an issue. That is a real issue that everything is connected to some form of computer. And it's so easily taken down just by cutting off electricity supply or snapping the wires. And even the Internet is connected only by a fragile network. I mean, you have some satellite. But, you know... We have those big, big wires that are connecting different countries, and they just basically lay on the floor of the ocean, connecting, you know, and they, it comes into the United States in specific points, and that's so fragile. I mean, I wish they could get away from that in a, um, yeah, so those, those are the issues that I have with technology. The, the way that it's shaping our society, not actually for the better. Um, how people get so aggressive because if they're not facing you face to face how aggressive they get on the internet because they have a presumed uh, barrier so they can get more aggressive and they don't think like they share information that they shouldn't share or they say things they shouldn't say and I think that is another issue with technology but because I work in technology I absolutely love it and I think it's great it's great for artists I think it's great for sharing information and um yeah, so I love technology. <laughs> so that answers the question for the week. See, right before the end of the week. All right, I'm going to now go back to work. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I will try posting some this weekend.